I'm milling about with Derek Wayne Johnson. He's the writer director of 40 Years of Rocky, The Birth of a Classic. Hey, Derek, oh, a t shirt. <laughs> I thought it was appropriate, you know. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me on. Oh, listen, how many times have people got you confused with Dwayne Johnson? Like, did the mashup of names? You know, it happens a lot, and I, I always said if I meet him, I'm going to call him out on it and, and challenge him to an arm wrestling competition, and I did, but his response was, you'd win. We're not going to wrestle. You'd win, and I was like, you're so cool, man. Thank you. He thought it was funny. When, when did you actually see him that you were able to uh, give him this challenge? I ran into him a couple years ago at dinner and um, it was just, I couldn't, I, I had to do it. And he just, he just thought it was so funny, but um, yeah, people do that all the time. And you know, it is what it is. Of course, I also told him, you know, my biceps are bigger than him. And he just was like, you were just something else, but he knew I was kidding. You should have said Sylvester's been training me all these years. So there you yeah. go. There you go. Yeah. yeah, no, The Rock is great. It, 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 he knew I was teasing, but, um, yeah, he was a nice guy. So tell me, um, I can't believe it's been 40 years. I think it's been 44 years, if I'm doing the math correctly. Yeah, 44. It's, <laughs> this film was supposed to come out, well, we wanted it to come out in 2016, and we just had hang-up after hang-up after hang-up. And what's crazy is it's only a 30-minute documentary. Yeah. It would have taken this long for it to come out. So that kind of shows you all of the red tape in the Hollywood film industry. Sometimes it takes a, it takes a while. So we'll what were the name? So eh, whatever. It's so good. But what were some of those hiccups? Oh gosh. Some I can't talk about, but <laughs> uh, just waiting games and legal things and this and that just business stuff. But you know, again, going back to the title, we just decided, well, we'll keep it 40 years of Rocky. Well, when we got our foreign distribution, they changed the title to Becoming Rocky, The Birth of a Classic. So if you're in the U.S. and Canada, it's 40 years of Rocky, The Birth of a Classic. Everywhere else, Becoming Rocky, The Birth of a Classic. It's just mind-boggling. Well, it's Rocky, essentially. It's Rocky. There you go. Um. You know, being home like this, we've been doing the Rocky Marathon, and I think I got up to Rocky Three. And your commentary from Stallone just, like, made it even sweeter. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, in, in the words of, of John Avildsen, the director of Rocky, he said that, you know, five pages in, this guy's, like, talking to two turtles, and he's like, I'm charmed. So I, I always use the word charm. Rocky is a charming film. Rocky is a charming character. And I think that our documentary is a charming documentary. And a lot of that has to go with Sly's narration. You, you just love listening to everything that he has to say. And, um, and of course, each sequel gets crazier and crazier and crazier. But there's something really charming about the original. Absolutely. And knowing that, you know, some of those stories, like The Rogue, for instance, I want you to tell that story. But in Rocky II, he actually makes fun of The Rogue. Yeah. Uh, the, the, well, the, the giant rogue that was, it was, you find out in our documentary, was made for a guy that was like 6'5". And, of course, Sylvester is like, I don't know, 5'10", something like that. Um, but also, you know, do you know about the pink uh, sweaters? No, tell me that one. So in our documentary, King of the Underdogs, where we highlight John Avildsen, he tells a story about how no one ever questioned why Rocky's people, his handlers, his, his cornermen, are wearing pink sweaters. And I never questioned it, but – they had white sweaters with red lettering and it, and they washed them and it ran and it turned pink and they didn't have the budget to get new sweaters. So oversized robe, pink sweaters, no one questioned it. And 
that just adds to the charm, I think. Yeah, so, so now, of course, uh, Stallone in Rocky II makes fun of the fact that the robe didn't fit him with that line. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. Absolutely. And, it, you know, another parallel of Rocky One and Two that is interesting is in Rocky One, the, one of the guys is making fun of Adrian. Uh, and he says, take her to the zoo. And then he has a, a really bad word that he uses along with it. And Rocky gets angry. But in Rocky II, he proposes to Adrian at a zoo. So a friend of mine was like, if you please, if I have one question to ask Sly, will you ask him this for me? Why did he do that? So I asked Sly, I was like, you know, she was made fun of about the zoo in part one. But then you proposed to her at the zoo in part two. Was that on purpose? He's like, no, I, I guess I just thought the zoo was a good, I never thought of that. No, there was no intention there. And so I told my friend and he just freaked out. So just like there was, he just literally just thought the zoo would be a good place to propose. But um, little, so there's all these little bitty things that these nuggets that are in our dock and, and it, it's just crazy how, these Rocky fans just, they absorb, they think of those little things that like you just take for granted. Yeah, um, what were some of the most surprising behind the scenes facts that, that you uncovered? Well, a lot of things, and, and you've seen the film, it, there are a lot of little lower thirds with little facts you know, on the screen that pop up. And some of those facts I had never heard before and I, when I showed Sly the film, I was like, I just want to make sure this is correct. He's like, yeah, all of it is. And so the most surprising one, the most obscure one, was in the middle of filming the final fight, and I don't want to give anything away to the audience, but you find out in our documentary that a beauty pageant was scheduled in between filming. So they had to film, rap, set back up for a beauty pageant and then set back up again the next day. I just thought that was so funny because it's just low budget filmmaking at its best. I'm sure they borrowed those, you know, the women that carry the numbers, maybe they borrowed them from the beauty pageant scene. You know, that's actually, that's a good question. I'll, I'll have to ask him that one. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, it's, they just put this thing together and it's funny because they had a good script and when you have a good script, it works out. Well, you obviously had um, a nice rapport going with Stallone. So did you meet him initially when you did the John Albertson documentary? Yes. So uh, I interviewed Sly for that and it went very well. And then I uh, befriended his brother, Frank, at a dinner with mutual friends. And Frank we the crooner. He is a crooner. Yeah. And, uh, and also appears in Rocky yep. and uh, my documentary. And so uh, we hit it off and I told him that I, you know, worked with his brother and uh, lo and behold, about a year later, uh, Sly invited my producing partner, Chris May and I over to his house with Frank to show him the King of the Underdogs documentary when, because he, Sly was in it. He hadn't seen it yet. So we show him the film and when it's over, he loved it. And he goes, I have an idea. I want you to do 40 years of Rocky, the birth of a classic. Just take this old footage, put it together and I'll narrate it. And we're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so uh, that's how that came about. And since then, Sly's also appeared in our upcoming documentary on Frank. And, uh, so we just have this unofficial Rocky Stallone-esque kind of trilogy going on that was totally not intentional at all. How many times, Derek, did you have to stop yourself from talking like Stallone? Like, like you know, <laughs> making fun of his voice? Usually when I quote him, I do it. And like, I think I did it around him once. And I was like, Ooh. Well, you know, he, he thought it was funny, but I have to stop myself a lot, actually, you know, because it's just, it's just so easy, you know what <laughs> I mean? So, I mean, it, it, but I got to stop. I got to stop doing it. 
I think that line, how you doing, I think that came from Rocky. Well, you, you hear it in the documentary as well. I, I don't want to say where, but for the audience, watch the documentary. You'll hear that line, and it's, it's really funny. It's really funny. Yeah, I think Joey from Friends stole it from Stallone. He had to, he had to yeah. <laughs> what a funny character. Absolutely. So um, tell me more, a little bit more about the uh, Frank Stallone documentary that you're working on. Well, um, it's, uh, it's finished and we, we've been on the festival circuit and doing really well with it. And then COVID-19 hit. So that release date got pushed. Um, so it's going to be coming out later, of course, but it's a really, really cool documentary. Um, Frank is kind of just like this guy that has been entertaining people for 50 years, but 40 years of that has been under a giant shadow. And um, we've, uh, we kind of show that in the film. And um, Frank's a good guy. He's been singing and, and acting all these years, but I don't think a lot of people really know his, his true talents and they will when they see it. And uh, it's just a fun, again, charming film. How much of that shadow did Frank admit to you in the uh, documentary? Quite a bit. You, you, you see it and, and it's acknowledged. Even Sly acknowledges it. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a very entertaining film. And um, you know, speaking of the shadow, <laughs> when we went over to Sly's that first time to see King of the Underdogs with Frank and Sly, Frank wanted to tell Sly that night that these guys are going to do a documentary on me. But right when the credits rolled, that's when Sly pitched 40 Years of Rocky, the birth of a classic. So Frank didn't even get to tell his brother that they're going to do a doc on me. Once again, the shadow was so large that Frank was kind of like, so about a week or so later, he was like, by the way, they're going to do one on me as well. And uh, just another example. And actually, I got one more. At the, at the, uh, the first screening of Stallone Frank, that is, the name of our Frank doc. It was at the Burbank Film Festival, which we won. And it was at a theater, I think an AMC theater. But all the posters that were outside and on the marquee and everywhere was the new Rambo movie. So once again, the giant shadow was looming over at Frank's film. There's Rambo posters everywhere. I mean, it's just, it's, it's funny because they have this friendly rivalry that you will see a little bit of in uh, 40 Years of Rocky. So um, now tell everybody watching at home when, how they can watch 40 Years of Rocky. Uh, what's the best way they can find it? So it comes out June 9th on digital HD. So it'll be on iTunes, Apple TV, Amazon, Google Play. Um, this is a very interesting release. It's so Metro Goldwyn Mayer, MGM, they bought it to put on Epics, and their which they own, but that hasn't come out yet. Oh, and yeah. so this is they, they we reserve these rights digitally to do this June 9th release, and that's coming out through Virgil Films. So there's no physical media yet of it, and it's not going to be on television yet. It's strictly digital download June 9th, um, which is really cool. It's two ninety nine. Um, and uh, I hope people find that worth it. And then also, again, overseas, it's Becoming Rocky, the birth of a classic, which is through Branded Studios in the UK. And um, it'll be on the same platforms, I believe. So it's really interesting. So we have the MGM Epics release coming soon, the digital download, and... Um, Maybe, hopefully, one day we'll get like DVD and Blu-ray for the hardcore collectors because, of course, that is kind of a dead medium, but we'll see. How cool would it be that you can show the Rocky one and then your documentary at a drive-in theater? Oh, wow. <laughs> that would be really cool, actually. Um, I, 
you just gave me a good idea. Okay, I might run with that. I want credit for that. Right, there you go. On the, the opening, instead of Rocky going across, it'll say Robin. There you go. We'll do that Perfect. for you. <laughs> so what was, uh, what was like the lesson that you learned at the end of, of, of filming this? What, did, what was your takeaway? Um, you know, it's interesting. Sly narrated it in one take. Wow. And it taught me that the man knows his stuff and uh, he's a pro. I remember asking him, do you want me to write anything out? Do you want me to script anything? He's like, no, no, I got it. I got it. And I was like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, yeah. So what I did was, see what I did there? And you see what I, I, I sent him notes the night before. And all I had him do was he did give me an intro and an outro to make sure that we started properly and ended properly. But all of the rest is one take. And I remember just thinking like, sometimes you just, you got to like, even though you're the director or the producer or whatever, you got to just, if the talent knows their stuff, let them do it. And uh, he knew his stuff. Is there anything that didn't quite make the cut? that uh, that you would have loved to have seen in the documentary? Yes, so the, the finished film is only 30 minutes, and I know a lot of fans are upset about that, but they haven't seen it yet, so they don't know why it's 30 minutes. But we had a 60 minute version. It wasn't working, it was too redundant, because it's home movies. And how much home movies can you watch? And then we cut it down to 45, and Sly was like, just make it 30 solid 30 and, and then it worked. So we have so much more home movie footage out there and a lot of it has been seen, but I have so much that still to this day hasn't been seen, but it just didn't work for this particular documentary. And that's thanks to John Abelson who let me have hours and hours of that footage. So what was your like favorite scene that you had to leave out that you wish was in there oh man you know i can't remember because it's been so long but i know okay i i, I know there i have some footage of sly and his family that i intentionally left out because it was too personal so that would have been nice i just didn't want to present it to sly and to the world but it's from 1976 and it's really sweet. And I just felt like that should just, that should just be kept alone and uh, let, it, let that private, beautiful moment just stay out. So I would say that, yeah. Mm. Well, listen, Derek, thank you so much for taking the time. And this is so much fun talking to you and you must check out 40 Years of Rocky and we're calling it the birth of a classic in the States. <laughs> yes we so, are well thank, thank you, you very much for having me it's been a blast it's uh it's fun to talk to you and uh yeah i hope um i hope people enjoy the film very cool thank you so much take good care right. thank you you too bye-bye bye-bye